everyone. Bienvenue and Ani. It is really amazing to see so many friends and colleagues from all across our nation joining this very innovative event tonight. My name is Ashley LaRose, and I am so honored to be your MC for tonight's event. I'm a proud cast member from Science North, and it's great to hear that our friends are still joining us, so come on in. You guys are looking fabulous tonight. I'm loving that you're representing all aspects of being Canadian, from fancy outfits to our down-to-earth jeans and tees. I'm joining you all from my home in Sudbury, Ontario. Since time immemorial, this area has been the traditional territory of the Atekmekshing and Anishinaabek. Today, with their continuing presence, many still regard the area of now Greater Sudbury as their homeland. Passed down from generations through oral history, this land is known by families as their gathering places, their hunting grounds, and areas of medicine. Joignez-vous à moi et prenez un moment pour remercier et honorer les peuples autochtones de votre région. Please join me and take a moment to thank and acknowledge the Indigenous peoples of your area, the First Nations, Métis, and Inuit, all First Peoples. We encourage you to use the chat box, which many of you have discovered, uh, to acknowledge the peoples and traditional territory of the land you are currently standing on. Their traditions and ways of knowing have contributed to the many innovations of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Nous devons clairement et ouvertement afficher notre gratitude dans notre engagement collectif envers la vérité et la réconciliation. Clearly and overtly, this gratitude must be demonstrated in our collective commitment in truth and reconciliation by working to transform existing relationships with open dialogue, mutual understanding, and respectful collaborations. Now I'm certain that you're curious about how this evening is going to roll out. As most of you know, every year at the CASC Annual Conference, a banquet and award ceremony is held to recognize the outstanding people, programs, and exhibits of our members. Even though we can't be together in person this year, it's pretty amazing that we can still continue this important CASC tradition. So grab a glass of something refreshing, settle in, and enjoy. The CASC team has been hard at work planning an exciting event for you, complete with a viewing party of the first ever Cascade Award Ceremony with several special guests. Following the, Cascor the Cascade Awards presentation, we'll break out into six rooms, each one featuring a different topic, which you have all pre-selected. Après la présentation de remise des prix Cascade, nous allons être repartis dans six salles, chacune d'entre elles étant ciblée à un sujet différent, que vous avez tous et toutes déjà pré-sélectionné. Following the breakout room experience, we invite you to stick around online with us for a live musical performance. And now if you'll permit me, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping notes with you. We chose to host the Cascade Awards event in this Zoom format to allow for interaction among our guests. Nous voulions conserver ce sens de la connexion, de la célébration et de la communauté. We wanted to honor the sense of connection, celebration, and community that we've experienced at previous events. We also wanted you to have the option to scroll through the gorgeous smiling faces and see your friends and colleagues from across the country and beyond, and perhaps raise a glass to celebrate the amazing work of our collective members. Les instructions suivantes en français se retrouvent dans le chat box. We encourage you to use the interactive features of Zoom, such as the chat box and reactions. You can find them along the bottom edge of your Zoom window. Try it now. Use the applause reaction if you're as thrilled as I am to be here. If you haven't tried the chat box yet, go ahead and type in one word that you think encapsulates what science centers and museums mean to you. You can also send a private message to an individual. Go ahead and say hi to your colleague on the other side of the country. Just a note to double check who you're sending your message to, either the entire room or an individual. If at any time you do have any technical difficulties or you have some questions during the event, go ahead and send a private chat message to CASC Tech Support and the sensational Tina LeDuc from CASC will help you out. Now, before we start the viewing party portion of our event, I'd like to introduce Marianne Mater, Executive Director of CASC to say a few words on behalf of the association and the board of directors. Marianne? Merci, Ashley. 
On n'a jamais eu autant besoin des centres et des musées de science. The need for science centers and science museums has never been so great. On behalf of CASC and our board of directors, we're honored that you're all taking this time together to celebrate the work of the sector over the past year and to acknowledge the collective leadership of our sector in facing the COVID-19 pandemic. We are science champions, resilient, compassionate, and innovative. And we'd like to thank all of our sponsors that helped us uh, achieve this event. And we're going to put those links in the chat box if you're curious to learn more about them. A special thanks to our presenting sponsor of this event, NSERF, who aim to make Canada a country of discoverers and inventors and innovators for the benefit of all Canadians. Merci pour votre soutien. We're thankful for their collective support. We're, we'd also like to thank the Rideau Hall Foundation, who recognized that together we can do more. They foster a culture of innovation in Canada by celebrating our accomplishments, as well as providing a platform for innovators to grow and connect. The technical wizardry of this event is through the in-kind production and editing support of Steam Labs, another proud cast member, who are education innovators, empowering a diverse community of makers to create, fix, and invent the world around them. We'd also like to thank Best Light Media, who provided in-kind video editing support as well. Thanks also goes to Little Ray's Nature Center for once again being our music and entertainment sponsor for the event. Musician Paul Lamb, who joined us at last year's Cascade Gala in Halifax, will be joining us again at the end of the show. So I think after two years of performing at the Cascade Awards, can we officially call him our cast house band? What do you think? I don't know about you, but I certainly have my list of requests ready to go for that portion of the evening. And last, but certainly not least, a thank you to everyone who helped make this event possible. And grand merci à ceux et celles qui ont permis la tenue de cette soirée, including the small but mighty cast team, including office manager Tina Leduc and graphic designer intern JC Paquette, to all our speakers and session moderators, and of course, to all of you for joining us. So let's sit back and watch the Cascade Awards portion of the event together. After it ends, our MC Ashley will join us again to move on to the Ask Me Anything interactive portion of the event. Profitez bien, enjoy. Hello everyone. I'm very happy to join you today in celebrating the first ever online Cascade Awards for the Canadian Association of Science Centers. C'est un immense plaisir d'être avec vous aujourd'hui. A big part of my job is to promote science to the public, to share the beauty of science that inspires people to learn more about the world around them. In doing that, there's no better partner than our science centers. This is because they are community anchors. Our science centers, museums, aquariums, planetariums, zoos, and maker spaces are trusted institutions that bring together people of all ages and cultural backgrounds. As places of relevant and accessible teaching and learning, science centers help us to understand and address life's challenges, such as the coronavirus pandemic that we're currently experiencing. One positive outcome of this crisis is that it has both underscored the importance of science and increased the public's appetite for learning about it. Aujourd'hui, alors que nous célébrons les personnes, les programmes et les expositions exceptionnelles qui ont fait une différence dans la vie de nos citoyens, je vous demande de réfléchir à ce que les centres scientifiques signifient pour vous, pour votre famille et pour votre communauté. There has never been a better time to explore and discover more of the science that illuminates our world. We all have an important role to play in shaping the future, and our science centers are providing us with the tools we need to build a better tomorrow for us all. It's now my pleasure to introduce a Canadian who perhaps needs no introduction, the first Canadian to walk in space and the first Canadian commander of the International Space Station, a true science champion. Please welcome Chris Hatfield. 
Hi, I'm uh, Chris Hadfield. I think most of you know that science centers are really important to me. I, I've been to science centers all across Canada and around the world, but my very first memory of a science center, the Ontario Science Center in the late 60s, it, it was formative for who I am. It, it gave me the idea that there were accessible things beyond my normal horizons. And that that joy of being able to experience something physically in person uh, in a scientific and experimental manner was really interesting to me. Of, of course, this year uh, is different. We're, we're being denied a lot of that straight physical interaction because of COVID. But it, just because we can't have Cascade in, in person doesn't mean that perhaps that, that makes this, this video interaction even more important for each of us right now. Because essentially we're all isolated on our own little spaceships right now. I spent half a year off the Earth, spread over three space flights. And some of the parallels are, are quite strong. You know, the, the sense of danger surrounding you that is always there on a spaceship. Normally in real life on Earth, you can sort of feel like you're, you're somewhat safe. On a spaceship, you can never let your guard down. And right now, COVID is sort of like that surrounding hostile meteorite-filled vacuum environment of space. So it's important that people have a scientific understanding of it. But you have to come to grips with the risk and find a way to put together a, a rhythm of life. Um, your own spaceship needs to be taken care of. Your crew is so important. Yourself, take care of your own physiology and psychology. Um, and then the people immediately around you in isolation. And then get on the phone and talk to people. Um, communicate with folks. It's what we do on spaceships. The common purpose of having a mission is a wonderfully unifying and mentally healthy thing. It allows you to give a rhythm to your day and maybe get over the difference of it and start to look at the joyful small things that are happening. We're going to get through this. We're going to get through it together. For the vast majority of us, this will be just that thing that happened in 2020 and shifted some of our perspectives and our, our rules a little bit. But the common unifying effect of a shared purpose can in fact be a good thing for humanity. We just have to make it through this one. I, I do want to congratulate the entire Canadian Association of Science Centers community for the work that you do. Uh, the work that you do when, when life is normal and the work that you're doing here during the pandemic. The necessity of the work that we do together as a common crew. Uh, we need that to support our families, to teach our children, especially now during this uh, challenging time working with our educators. So uh, thanks for getting together, everyone. I'm pleased to be a very small part of it. And I now invite you to take a look at some of the uh, creative ways that the Canadian Association of Science Centers community is bringing uh, Canadians together while we're all physically apart. Hey, science fans. Hi everyone, this is Rachel from Science World, and today I'm joined by... Doo -doo -doo -doo. Hi friend! Yay! Looks like I might have a left-handed kitty here. Hey guys, it's Mason from Science Village, and I am super excited to show you guys Chewy. Hi everyone, my name is Jacqueline from Telespark, and welcome to Spark Science from Home. I have with me our lovely camera assistant. <laughs> But don't worry, we are staying two meters apart to practice social distancing. Hey folks, Alan Nursall, Tell Us World of Science Edmonton. Here, I'm still in my kitchen. <laughs> that is so good. It will blow your mind. All it does is help you understand the properties of sound. Sound needs a medium. Hello everybody. It's a third week in a row that we've been hanging out at home celebrating science, toasting the wonder of the universe. So thank you for joining us this evening. We're thrilled that you can. Have you heard about the Junior Astronauts Challenge? The Canadian Space Agency has invited youth across our country to participate in various challenges between now and the end of April. This year's home venue entries for the Steam Labs Family Maker Camp robotic marble races are looking very strong. Those with access to a microbit, Circuit Playground Express, or Arduino microcontroller will be hosting live video sessions soon at makercamp.com to help you get started. Hi everyone, welcome back to Science at Home. Today's topic is gases. <laughs> 
propage le mouvement Paul Virus. Hey, good morning, everybody out there. Look who's joined us. We've got Tom and Headkeeper Sabrina. Over to you, my dear. Here I am, Michael, live from my kitchen. Uh, welcome to Cosmic Nights, everyone. <laughs> awesome. How's your, uh, how's working at home uh, working out for you? It's really nice. The commute is really short. It's only about three steps away from my bed, so that's quite nice. <laughs> Science North and the Ontario Science Centre have partnered up with the support of the Government of Ontario to provide you resources that support the delivery of the science and technology curriculum to your students. Okay, so let's try without soap first and see what happens. Hmm, not very much. Let's flip it over and dip the other end into the dish soap. Let's see what happens. <gasps> Whoa, look at that. Today on Discovery at Home, we'll be talking about sound. Sound is one of my favorite topics because it gives us the opportunity to mix science and art to make music. I'm going to show you my fanciest string instrument now. Tout allure pour la nature. Tout allure pour la nature est un jeu créé par l'équipe du musée pour montrer les fondements du biomimétisme, une approche innovante inspirée par les principes utilisés par la nature pour améliorer les technologies tout en respectant l'environnement. I'm Bobby and I'm recording this for CACUS, the Canadian Association for Girls in Science, as part of CACUS at Home. I'm kind of nervous for this, so I'm going to take a piece of cardboard and I'm going to put it over my cup. So after that, we have to flip it. using only the chopstick. What do chimpanzees, ladybugs, and firebelly newts have in common? Each of these species have been to space. Hello everyone, my name is Sally Science, and I love it when you send in your curious questions about the world we live in together. Hey, how you doing? Tommy Tungsten here for Relevance R Us with another super special sale. So spring tides are an excellent time to go out and check out the beach and the seaweeds, all that cool stuff that is, you could find there. First live. I hope I did okay, guys. It's great to see you. Lots of love. Stay safe, everybody. Here's a song for the times. It's called uh, We Stand Together. It's a quarantine. Just be happy if you've got a home. Just be happy if you're not alone. And if you are, pick up the telephone. Start talking or listen. Go walking. Or fishing, the time you think you have, you don't own. We stand apart, but we stand together like players all on the field. We stand apart, but we stand together to win. We never can you take the hour take the day say the things you always meant to say beat the rug beat the drum it ain't easy 
finding simple rules of thumb. We stand apart, but we stand together like players all on the field. We stand apart, but we stand together to win. We never can yield. Well, there's me and there's you. One of us just might have a clue. But you can be the one to live up to. Come out of this whole thing brand new. We stand apart, but we stand together like players all on the field. We stand apart, but we stand together to win. We never can yield. Yes, to win, we never will yield. My name is Alejandro Adam, and I am the president of the Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Council of Canada. Au CRS Angers, nous voulons que tous les Canadiens et les Canadiennes se considèrent comme des inventeurs et des innovateurs. We are proud supporters and admirers of science centers and science museums across the country that popularize science culture and promote STEM learning as an important part of our lives. Today, your work seems more important than ever. La pandémie actuelle a mis en évidence l'importance fondamentale des sciences et du génie pour notre monde. Scientists and engineers are being turned to for their expertise, their ingenuity, and their leadership. Their work has taken on a sudden and personal relevance for many. Families want to understand the science behind the solutions to our present crisis. Young students want to learn how to follow in the footsteps of the researchers who are stepping into the spotlight. Science centers and museums play a critical part in this work. We value your unique contributions and service as community anchors that develop innovative responses to community needs and provide spaces where students teachers and families learn, explore, and become inspired. Nous sommes aussi fiers d'appuyer la cérémonie annuelle de remise des prix Cascade, qui rend hommage aux gens exceptionnels, aux programmes et aux expositions des membres du réseau de la CCS. I was told that this year, CASC received its highest number of applicants in 10 years. I'm sure the decision from the jury and board members was not an easy one. And now, on to the highlight of the event, the annual Cascade Awards. The first category of the evening is Best Program. Adjudicated by a jury of industry peers, this award is given annually for the best on-site or off-site educational, interpretive, or public program. The finalists for Best Program Small Institution are Early Explorers Preschool, the Exploration Place Museum and Science Centre, and Take Your Daughter to the Science Centre Day at the Okanagan Science Centre and the recipient of the 2020 Best Program Small Institution is Early Explorers Preschool at the Exploration Place Museum and Science Center. The Early Explorers Preschool is a licensed preschool program set within the Exploration Place Museum and Science Center in Prince George, BC. Children enjoy the only STEAM-based preschool curriculum in Prince George, balanced with circle time, art, songs, fine and gross motor play, and kindergarten readiness, set in a stimulating learning environment like no other in our area. Congratulations to the Exploration Place Museum and Science Centre. 
Hi, I'm Robin. I'm the manager of Integrated Learning at the Exploration Place. I'd like to thank the CAS board for considering us and selecting us for this award and everything that they do to support and advocate for science centres across Canada. I'd like to send a shout out to the Okanagan Science Centre for everything they do to contribute to Canada's scientific and cultural literacy. My biggest thank you goes to our two incredible early childhood educators, without which we wouldn't be able to run this unique and innovative program. Thank you so much. Hi, my name is Leah and I'd like to thank the entire team at Exploration Place. Without you, we wouldn't have such a unique program. Thank you. Hi, I'm Catherine and most importantly, we'd like to thank all the families and children of the past, present and future that participate in everything we have to offer. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. So thank you. Air high five. <laughs> <laughs> The finalists for Best Program Large Institution are Digital Discovery, Discovery Center, Centre de Sciences sur la Route, Centre de Sciences de Montréal, The Science Center on the Road, Montreal Science Center, STEAM Residency Program, Ingenium, Canada's Museum of Science and Innovation and Ontario Science Center, Residence STIAM, Ingenium, Musée des Sciences et de la Technologie du Canada et le Centre des Sciences de l'Ontario, Northern Ontario Science Festivals, Science North, Festival des Sciences du Nord de l'Ontario, Science Nord, Adults Only Night, He, Her, They, Everyone and You, aka Beyond the Binary, from TELUS Spark. And the recipient of the 2020 Best Program Large Institution is... Northern Ontario Science Festival's Science North. The Northern Ontario Science Festival engages various audiences in a week-long celebration that highlights and celebrates local and global science and technology in the festival locations of Sault Ste. Marie, North Bay, and Thunder Bay, Ontario. Each festival is a result of a collaborative effort of local community partners under the direction of Science North. Congratulations to the Science North team. We are honoured to be recognised for this prestigious national award for the Northern Ontario Science Festivals. Cette reconnaissance nous est très chère et nous remercions la CCS pour cet honneur. The festival events inspire children, youth, their families, adults and older adults to learn about and really appreciate the science happening in their own backyards. This is an important way to bring global STEM concepts and learning throughout Northern Ontario communities. C'est avec grand plaisir que nous nous engageons avec ces communautés du Nord de l'Ontario, delivering amazing science festivals and to date engaging over 44,000 participants in three communities is something we are very proud of. All this would not be possible without the dedication of our Northern Ontario partners across the communities of North Bay, Sault Ste. Marie and Thunder Bay. On behalf of all of the partners in the Northern Science Festival team, we'd like to thank CASC for this award. Nous vous remercions du fond de notre cœur. And now, the award for Best Exhibit or Show Small Institution. Adjudicated by a jury of industry peers, this award is given annually for the best permanent, temporary, or traveling exhibition or small multimedia live presentation or planetarium show of a CASC full member. The finalists for Best Exhibit or Show Small Institution are Film Emergence, L'Evolution Cosmique Astrolabe du Mont Megantic, Film Emergence, Cosmic Evolution, Astrolabe du Mont Megantic, Naturoscope, La Maison Léon Provencher, Son Que du Son, Musée de la Nature et des Sciences de Sherbrooke, Sound Only Sound, Sherbrooke Museum of Nature and Science, Cultiver son Jardin Intérieur, Place Resurgo, Cultivate Your Inner Garden, Resurgo Place. It's a tie. The recipients of the 2020 Best Exhibit or Show Small Institution are Naturoscope, La Maison Léon Provencher et Son Que du Son, 
Musée de la nature et des sciences de Sherbrooke. Naturoscope, la maison Léon Provencher. À son entrée dans la maison Léon Provencher, le visiteur est mis en contact avec la nature. Il découvre les classes du vivant et la méthode scientifique. Sa visite se poursuit là où dispositifs interactifs, éléments graphiques, animaux naturalisés et artefacts sont combinés dans un parcours simulant présentant la biodiversité locale. Félicitations, la maison Léon Provencher. Bonjour à tous. Au nom de la Maison Léon Provencher, je voudrais remercier particulièrement le jury de nous avoir accordé le prix Cascade 2020 pour notre exposition permanente Naturoscope, Cap sur la biodiversité. C'est un honneur de recevoir ce prix pour récompenser tant d'efforts pour une si petite équipe de, et un projet sur longue haleine. Je voudrais remercier particulièrement l'ancien directeur général Didier Wallet, sans qui ce projet n'aurait pas vu le jour. Je voudrais remercier Amélie Demers, chargée de projet, responsable de la création du contenu et de la mise sur pied de l'exposition permanente. Je ne veux pas oublier les artisans non plus, qui sont B Architecture, Sina Production, Arlo Création, Quattro Design et bien sûr les graphistes qui sont Julie Fortin et Laurent Grisselin. Ce n'est pas toujours facile de créer, d'innover dans un domaine aussi important et développé que le nôtre. La culture scientifique est aussi importante que la culture et les arts. Je vous dirais que pour moi, la littératie scientifique chez les jeunes, c'est très important. Ça permet de les aider à développer des réflexes et euh, être capable de prendre des décisions pour préserver la biodiversité d'aujourd'hui et celle de demain. Encore une fois, merci. Son, que du son, Musée de la nature des sciences de Sherbrooke. Son, que du son est une exposition itinérante qui traite du son. Le son ne s'entend pas seulement par les oreilles. Cette exposition le prouve en faisant ressentir les sons aux visiteurs par leurs autres sons. Et oui, touchés par la main et par le corps. Et visions sont aussi au rendez-vous. Félicitations à l'équipe du Musée de la nature et des sciences de Sherbrooke. Chers collègues, c'est avec beaucoup de fierté que j'accepte ce prix au nom des employés du musée pour l'exposition « Son que du son ». J'aimerais remercier nos précieux collaborateurs, Patrimoine canadien, le ministère de la Culture et des Communications, ainsi que le groupe acoustique de l'Université de Sherbrooke, plus particulièrement Olivier Robin. Dear colleagues, I'm so proud to accept this award on behalf of all the employees for the exhibition Sound Only Sound. I would like to thank our precious collaborators, Heritage Canada, Ministère de la Culture et des Communications, and Acoustic Group of Université de Sherbrooke, more especially Olivier Robin. My best wish is to see you next year physically. Mon plus beau souhait, c'est de vous revoir tous l'an prochain. À plus de deux mètres ou moins de deux mètres peut-être. Merci. The finalists for Best Exhibit or Show Large Institution are Explore, La Science en Grand, Centre de Sciences de Montréal Explore, Life-Sized Science, Montreal Science Center Mindworks, Ontario Science Center Dans Votre Tête, Centre de Sciences de l'Ontario Think, Science North Imaginez, Science Nord Joy Lab, Saskatchewan Science Center Bodyworks, Science World, British Columbia. Legends of the Northern Sky, TELUS World of Science, Edmonton. Terra Lumina, Toronto Zoo. It's another tie. The recipients of the 2020 Best Exhibitor Show, Large Institution are Mindworks, Ontario Science Center, Dans Votre Tête, Centre des Sciences de l'Ontario, and Think, from Science North. Mindworks is a thought-provoking, bodies-on and minds-on exhibition that encourages visitors to explore and learn about their own minds and how they think, feel, and react. Through intriguing and thought-provoking experiences, this exhibition is designed to spark moments of mindfulness, challenging visitors to question themselves and discover answers experientially. Congratulations to the Ontario Science Centre. Hi there, I'm out at the creek behind our house 
for this video to say thank you for um, receiving the Cascade Award for the Mindworks exhibition. I thought being out by the creek and in nature has so many benefits. It makes you more creative and it reduces your stress. So I thought that would give me a leg up for this video. My husband's idea was that we film our dog and that my voice is off camera like that dog Pluto that's an Instagram sensation, but I didn't have the technical skills. So just from the bottom of my heart, I just want to say thank you and we appreciate being recognized by the Canadian Association of Science Centers. Thank you to the committee that considered all the nominations. And I also want to recognize all the fantastic teams and projects that were nominated alongside us. It was a really amazing year, fantastic projects. And when we're together in the future, we'll have to celebrate. Thank you. Think Science North. Science North completed a major renewal of the fourth level of the Science Centre in 2019 with a new space for visitors to do hands-on tinkering, creation and innovation. The new Think, Tinker, Hack, Innovate, Network and Know creates an exciting interactive area for hands-on exploration and learning. Félicitations, congratulations to the Science North team. We are so thankful and honoured to have the Think Project recognized for this prestigious national award. The Think experience is all about the design process, learning about the value of iterations and prototyping. Tout est propice aux expériences. Nous fournissons les outils et nos visiteurs apportent l'inspiration et l'innovation. This exhibit is not only the first major renewal of the fourth level of the Science Centre at Science North, but it is also a project that spans across Northern Ontario. Science North is Northern Ontario's Science Centre. So with partners across Northern Ontario, we implemented permanently installed Think Hubs in six Northern communities. We're able to connect to Northern audiences right in their communities. On behalf of Science North and all of our partners across Northern Ontario, we would like to thank the Canadian Association of Science Centres for recognizing the Think Project. And with that, the institutional award part of the award ceremony is concluded. A big thank you to all those who submitted a nomination and to all those who helped make each of these projects possible. Now, we'll move on to the final part of our ceremony by recognizing individuals who have been nominated by their peers and colleagues. The following categories are in recognition of outstanding individual achievements, adjudicated by the CASC Board of Directors. All award recipients will become honorary lifetime members of the Canadian Association of Science Centres. Making a difference. Fait la différence. Awarded to an individual engaged directly in program or exhibit delivery who has made a significant difference to their colleagues and their public visitors. The recipient of the 2020 Making a Difference Award is David Gosher. Science Facilitator, Science World, British Columbia. David makes a difference every day, be it with the students in his workshops, the adults watching his shows appreciating his deadpan approach, or his commitment to the support and development of his co-workers. His dedication to science education is unwavering and he is highly respected and admired at Science World. Congratulations, David. Thank you very much for this award. I'd like to start by thanking the CASC Board of Directors. Those who know me know that I am a uh, very quiet person. I don't really like a lot of attention, um, and that's why I'd like to take a moment to thank my coworkers who put together this nomination. Uh, Cindy, Joanne, Mila, uh, Terry, Jordana, and Pauline. Um, they're very sneaky about this. They even uh, talked to my wife to check if you know, I would be okay with this, and my wife's response was, who cares if he is, just do it anyways. Sometimes it's good to be out of your comfort zone. Thank you again, everybody, it is an honor. The final award category for this evening is for Outstanding Career Achievement. Awarded to an individual who has made major long-term contributions to the Canadian Science Centre and Museum community. The recipients of the 2020 Outstanding Career Achievement Awards are Ardith Edwards, Manager, Volunteer Services, 
TELUS World of Science Edmonton. And Nicole Chiasson, Director, Education and Northern Programs at Science North. Ardeth was instrumental in building TELUS World of Science Edmonton's volunteer program. During her 27-year tenure, Ardeth recruited, trained, and cultivated thousands of volunteers who grew into strong ambassadors for the value of science centers in their communities. Congratulations, Ardeth. A warm hello from TELUS World of Science Edmonton. I'm Ardeth Edwards and I've had the pleasure of working in this unique and dynamic environment for 27 years. Just one visit to a science centre can be awe-inspiring and filled with discovery. Imagine what 27 years could hold. In no other work environment would I be exposed to such a range of experiences. My journey here has been filled with more adventures, more opportunities, more friendships, more fun more meaningful memories than ever expected. It has been an amazing and rewarding experience. To my very talented and dedicated staff here, I am filled with gratitude for your consideration and this important nomination. You have touched my heart once again. CASC staff and board members, I am truly honored and I thank you for this significant recognition and award. I share it with the wonderful volunteer and paid staff who make up our team at Choosy. To fellow Science Centre and Museum staff across Canada, I wish you continued success and exciting new frontiers. As storytellers of science, you ignite generations of visitors with your passion and your commitment. You engage, you inspire, and you capture imaginations and explore possibilities to imagine. You are our dream weavers. I thank you again from the bottom of my heart and to all of you Keep up the amazing work. Nicole Chiasson, Director, Education and Northern Programs, Science North. Throughout her 32 years at Science North, Nicole's skills and abilities as a visionary team builder and leader have allowed Science North to expand its activities throughout the vast 800,000 square kilometers of Northern Ontario with greater reach and impact than ever in our 35-year history. Félicitations, Nicole. Bonsoir et un très gros merci. Thank you for this incredible recognition. What an amazing way for me to end my 32-year career at Science North. If I'm being recognized for this award, it's because of the dedicated and passionate colleagues, staff, and Northern partners I've had the good fortune to work with over these years. To be able to say that throughout this period, I've enjoyed coming to work every day. To have words like fun, learning, passion, collaboration, and appreciation be descriptives of my work life is a true privilege. I, we are so lucky to work in places that can change people's lives, forge a new path for them, create a spark that can influence their career. C'est un vrai rêve réalisé que d'avoir été capable de jouir de chaque jour au travail, d'avoir contribué d'une petite façon à la vulgarisation des sciences, d'avoir aidé à former des jeunes à devenir des membres essentiels du personnel chez nous et d'avoir bâti des collaborations pour que Science Nord soit vraiment le centre de sciences du nord de l'Ontario. I am truly honored to receive this award and I want to thank CASC and everyone who I've worked with along the way for making this possible. Thank you so much. And with that, this concludes the 2020 Cascade Awards. Please everyone, raise a glass and applaud all of this year's recipients. The next part of the program will begin shortly. I'm not crying, you're crying. Truly a huge congratulations again to all recipients. Please do raise a glass. How amazing is it that this is also the largest attendance for our awards ever? Of course, we are looking forward to seeing you all in person again next year in Ottawa. Maintenant, pour la partie finale de la soirée, voici un moment avec vos pairs et un ou une spécialiste de contenu. Now, moving on to the interactive portion of the evening, a moment with your peers and a content expert. Les instructions suivantes en français se retrouvent dans le chat box. Upon registering for tonight's event, you all selected your top three choices from the list of sessions, and some of you asked to be surprised. 
In just a moment, you'll be placed into one of these sessions with colleagues, friends, family, and some new connections. Just a note that anyone in the artificial intelligence session will stay here in the main room. Each room will have a question moderator who will assist the expert by delivering them the questions you enter into the chat box. Each session will run for about 20 minutes. Once the session has ended, you'll all be moved back here into the main room for final words and our live musical performance. Maintenant, si vous êtes tous et tout prêts, le changement de pièce va se faire d'un moment à l'autre. And now, if you're ready, the move will happen momentarily. see if you can tackle that broad subject of the future of science communication. To me, I think the future of science communication needs to really be audience first, which is not news, but I also think it needs to be very diverse and inclusive. Right now, we see science communication kind of happening in a rather homogenous way. Um, what I like about social media is it removes some of the gatekeeping for like who can be a Nat Geo or a Discovery Channel host. It removes some of that uh, traditional gatekeeping that we see and when you look at what's on TV and how science is represented on TV and the mainstream stu uh, stuff it's very one note um, I've been in the room with those producers and they really want a certain type of thing I've even been told not to wear makeup when I'm doing hosting stuff with certain channels I want the future of science communication to not be like that I want it to be as diverse as the people we're trying to communicate with I want us to be communicating by and for our I want it done by diverse communities for diverse communities. Um, and I think for that to happen, we need to not just have a Bill Nye, not just have a Neil deGrasse Tyson or like one singular person. We need many, many science communicators. And so I don't want to be the next anything. I want us all to be the next everything together. You're a neuroscientist. And but recently you've been talking just about one subject and maybe speak about <sighs> that a bit about sort of like that transition to um, talking just about COVID? Should a communicator only speak on their area of expertise or can anyone communicate? I'm in the camp where anyone can communicate, but we have to follow a set of guidelines and have integrity and do things carefully. Um, so I've pivoted now to talking mostly about the pandemic and COVID-19. Uh, I'm being as careful as I can, not being an expert, trying to always quote the experts. Um, but yeah, I, I think I think that's a real challenge for us because we want to get information in front of people, but, and so you have to move fast, but you also have to be very thorough and science is just too slow for the pace of communication right now when it comes to the pandemic. So it's really been a challenge, but something so important. And I've just noticed uh, anecdotally with my own stuff and, and from some other people, there's a huge need because a lot of good communication is happening on social media, but it's happening on Twitter and on YouTube. There's also a lot of bad stuff on YouTube too. And almost no one was putting good information on Instagram. And so those of us who were, were having rock, like sky high engagement rates. Like people were so desperate. I've never seen so much engagement on a single post. And I've been doing this for three years. So there's a huge, huge need um, for, for spreading out where we talk about science online. Can you AI? Oh, can we trust AI? That's a really good oh. question. You want to take that, Tanya? Oh, I don't know. I think we'll share this answer. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, so, I mean, my high-level answer is maybe. Um, and I think that's, that's really the only fair answer, uh, but it could be argued both ways. It really depends on who you ask. So, Andy, I don't know if you agree, but I say maybe because it really depends how the algorithms that support AI are designed and coded and who's coded them and in what context the AI is functioning and for what purpose. And as you can see, even with just those few questions um, that I'm raising, AI is very complicated because it's a set of systems that will work together and churn out outputs and outcomes that the designer may have intended or not intended. Um, Andy, what do you think?
Oh, you're muted. I muted myself. <laughs> yeah, I agree exactly. And I think that the big, like you said, the algorithms are so important and also the data that the things are trained on is so important. They, they say that 78 or 80% of the work being done in, in AI is actually data gathering. It's finding the information to train AIs on. And there's a whole subset of AI that is, is come to the fore now, which is machine learning, where the AIs teach themselves based on the data we feed into them. And there's so many examples of AI that is, is sexist, is racist, is all kinds of uh, terrible outcomes because the data that's fed into it is sexist or racist or, or terrible in some way. There's, there's things that are affecting people's lives right now. There's a, uh, a software product called Compass that's used in a lot of courtrooms to help decide if, if offenders should be uh, granted parole. And this is a black box algorithm. They don't tell you what it's trained on. They don't tell you what's in, inside of it. And so some journalists sort of analyzed it and took it apart a bit. And they found that, surprise, surprise, since it was trained on the previous judicial decisions by the American court system, this algorithm since that court system it is racist, this algorithm is also very racist, and it c comes up with terrible in inequity and inequality in, in its decisions. So I think that the in order to trust AI, we have to have oversight over the inputs into these algorithms and also oversight over the out outcomes that it has, and that there's some monitoring of this and some kind of uh, standing up to the results and being accountable for those results when a company does use them in this way. Answering your first question, because we have a first question from uh, John Corcoran. Excellent. That was saying, shooting lasers at asteroids, do you need an assistant? <laughs> <laughs> we need lots and lots of assistants. Um, no, it's, it's really neat. So this mission, OSIRIS-REx, that's going out to, um, to grab a piece of an asteroid and bring it back to Earth, um, before we can figure out where we can sample it, we have to understand the shape of it really, really well. And so Canada's contribution to this mission is a 3D laser scanner. Um, it's a really neat piece of technology uh, that basically we shot this laser close to 3 billion individual times. So measurements that you wouldn't even believe. Um, and we've covered this asteroid that's about sort of the size of the CN Tower. Um, we've shot it with 3 billion individual measurements. And now we understand the shape of it, one point every seven centimeters. So this is officially the most detailed map of any planetary body in the entire solar system. Um, and it was a Canadian technology that, uh, that did it. How important are manned exploration versus unmanned with advanced robotics, HD cameras, sensors, etc.? That's a really great question. Um, I think they go hand in hand. We need to know something about where we're going before we go there. And so the robotic missions help with the you know, early reconnaissance. What kind of conditions can we expect in terms of weather, the soil that we're going to land on? Are there any resources there that we can utilize? And then we're prepared to go as humans. You know, you wouldn't just go camping in the wilderness with just a few things on your back and hope that's what you need. You want to make sure you have everything you need, especially in space where you don't have anything you can stop at to help you along the way. And so we need a combination of these things. Why can't it all be robotic? is just because we're really great at building robots. I love the Mars rovers a lot, but they're still not a replacement for humans. And the amount that a geologist can do by stepping out there and picking up a rock and just being able to look at it like 360 is so much more informative than the stuff that we can do with the rovers right now. It's still really difficult to transfer the capacity of a human brain into the format of a rover. What is an advancement in medicine that you're about, or one particular breakthrough that you hope will take place in the future? Thanks, Pooja. Oh gosh, that's a great question. There are so many out there. And I would say, so one of the hats I wear you heard was with Luxonic. And what I get to do with that company is essentially build a medical holodeck uh, or the matrix for medicine. And it's, it's meant for deep space missions, um, my role specifically. But the idea is how do you keep up skills and training for medical practitioners um, who may, whose skills may deteriorate on a deep space or exploration class mission. 
Um, so that's really fun for me. And then also thinking about how medicine needs to evolve for medicine on the moon, medicine on Mars. Um, you know, how do we recreate the standard of Earth? And if not recreate it, surpass it when we're in a resource limited environment like the moon or like Mars. So that's what I spend a lot of my time thinking about. Freestyle Social is an event series that we've been running um, live, uh, and we're more recently adapting to this online version, and we're sort of figuring out the tools and, and monkeying about with that. But the, the premise is that we sort of show up at a, a venue. So usually it's like a student group or a, a library, or most, most frequently, my favorite is a bar, because that is an environment that really connotes to people that this will be a fun experience. Um, we'll put tape down the middle of the floor and we'll ask what I call spark questions. So things like, would it be better if humans laid eggs? Or should we erase our own bad memories? Or should we make robots smarter than us? Should we pee in the shower? Um, we'll tell our audience, you've got to pick a side. Um, you know, we give them 10 seconds. You know, people are all surprised at what side their friends pick. Oh, you pee in the shower, what's wrong with you? And then we'll put a microphone in the middle of the floor. Each half of the room gets to explain to the other half why you should come over to our side. We've got three rules. So the first rule is say your piece. Um, we all have blind spots in our thinking that are, again, by definition, invisible to us. And so we encourage people to say their piece so that we can get the greatest perspective diversity possible. We can get all the blind spots covered or as many as we can uh, cover. Rule number two is uh, suspend your judgment. So if you hear an idea or a concept, something that surprises you and you think to yourself, huh, you know, never thought of it that way. That's actually a pretty good point. Then you should suspend your judgment change your mind and walk across to the other side of the room. Rule number three is change your mind again. We really encourage flip-flopping because frankly, I think it gives you the best chance that you're gonna have at finding as many of your blind spots as possible. And so for us, an important part of building spaces where people feel comfortable changing their minds are making sure that we have capacity to laugh at ourselves, to be silly um, and asking questions like, should we pee in the shower? Like, it's impossible to answer a question like that while taking yourself seriously. Um, and I think that's really important because often when we're talking to people who we hope they'll change their mind, the problem is that it's very difficult to let go of ideas that you love because you take yourself too seriously. So um, this is an experience that we've been developing and we're testing it empirically. I'm actually conducting my PhD research to see is this actually an effective strategy So this is Echo. And so Echo is our youngest bat. So he's four years old and we know his exact age because he was born in human care. And our last bat is Luna. And Luna, as I mentioned earlier, is Echo's, <laughs> she is, is Echo's mother. And so we know that she is at least six years old because she was an adult when she had her, when she had Echo. And uh, so she's at least six years old. But again, we don't know her exact age. She's very active. She's also peeing on my keyboard. So we'll see how that goes after. <laughs> uh, Do bats in Ontario pollinate or does that just apply to fruit related bats? Oh, that's that's a really good question. So no, our bats in Ontario do not pollinate because they're insect eaters. Um, and so they wouldn't, they wouldn't land on a flower or anything like that. Um, but mostly uh, like fruit bats and nectar eating bats are more, a little bit more south than, than here in Canada. <laughs> it's so fast. <laughs> they're such good flyers. And of course, they're the only flying mammals as well. So uh, they're uniquely adapted for flight, which is really amazing. Uh, bienvenue. Welcome back, everyone. Um, that was pretty cool. Thank you um, for uh, entertaining our first experiment with breakout rooms. I hope you came away with some food for thought. And also a thank you to our moderators and our content experts. Another huge thanks once again to our sponsors for tonight's event, uh, NSERC, Rideau Hall Foundation, Steam Labs, Best Light Media, and Little Ray's Nature Centers. Un gros merci à tous nos commanditaires. This concludes the official portion of our evening, but please stay online. Kick off your shoes, maybe set the mood, get ready to dance. 
Some of you may remember him from CASC 2019. Joining us live from Halifax, Nova Scotia will be Paul Lamb. Good night, everyone. Stay safe, stay healthy, and thank you for all that you do. Bonne nuit tout le monde. Restez en sécurité et en bonne santé. Merci pour tout ce que vous accomplissez. And now please join me in welcoming Paul Lamb. Okay, perfect. Here's a, here's, a, here's a wonderful song for you. I always start off with this one because it's easy to sing. Uh, and I know I always, I just always like the song and it always reminds me of playing at the lower deck, which is my favorite place to play in Halifax on the water. It's a song called If I Had a Boat. <laughs> And if I had a boat, I'd go out on the ocean. And if I had a pony, well, I'd ride him on my boat. And we could all together go out on the ocean, send me up on my pony on my boat. And if I were Roy Rogers, I sure would not be single. I couldn't bring myself to marrying old Dale. Just to me and Trigger, and we go right in through their movies. We buy a boat and on the sea we sail. And if I had a boat, I'd go out on the ocean. And if I had a pony, well, I'd ride them on my boat. And we get all together and go out on the ocean and send me up on my pony on my boat. Now the mystery masked man was smart. He got himself a Tondo. The Tonto did the dirty work for free. A Tonto, he was smarter. One day said Kimosabi, kiss my ass, I bought a boat, I'm going out to sea. And if I had a boat, I'd go out on the ocean. If I had a pony, well, I ride them on my boat. We get all together and go out on the ocean. Send me up on my pony on my boat. And if I was like lightning, I wouldn't need no sneakers. I come and go whenever I would please. I scare them by a sea tree, scare them by the light pole, but I would not scare my pony on my boat out on the sea. And if I had a boat, I'd go out on the ocean. And if I had a pony, well, I ride him on my boat, and we get all together, go out on the ocean, send me up on my pony on my boat, and send me up on my pony on my boat. If I had a boat. Does it sound okay? Can, uh, can I get the thumbs up on the sound too? It's all right? Okay, good. Excellent. Well, welcome. Uh, welcome everybody. Thank you for coming into my living room. Strange times indeed, but uh, uh, making the best of it. I'm, I've been having lots of fun doing these shows online. I really enjoy it. It's like you're right here, right in my living room. Like you're not gonna get any closer than this. It's never gonna happen. So this is wicked on that level. I'm gonna try a song here. Uh, I saw somebody requested uh, Sweet Caroline. I see that in there, I will get to that. Uh, I'm gonna try a different uh, Neil Diamond song. And I've never sang it before. So I'm gonna sing it right now for the first time ever. So here we go. Give it a roll, here we go. Took you 
warm, she said, and you won't get a leg. The look of you want in a day that's all wrong, looks all right. And I love her. God knows I love her. Kentucky woman, she got to know you. She got to own you. Kentucky woman. She ain't the kind of hit turn in the drop of a name. But something is sad because she's got turned you on just the same. And she loves me. God knows she loves me. Kentucky woman. She got to know you. She got to own you. Kentucky woman. Don't want much. The good Lord let me need not be a gentle touch from that one girl and life is sweet and good. There ain't no doubt. I'm talking about Kentucky woman. She gets to know you. She gonna own you. Kentucky woman. Don't want much. The good Lord's earth beneath my feet, a gentle touch. That one girl in life is sweet and good. There ain't no doubt. I'm talking about Kentucky woman. She gets to know you. She gonna own you. Kentucky woman. Kentucky woman, Kentucky woman. Kentucky woman. I've never sang that before. That was my first time ever. And uh, that's a good tune. I like it a lot. Here's a song um, from one of my favorite singers from the Eagles, Don Henley. Okay? I've always loved him. Always love this voice. Here we go. so much i really appreciate that thank you oh there you go exactly yeah that works because i've seen somebody say some uh, some um 
Canadian stuff. I don't do any Celtic music, so I don't do any Great Big C. I wrote, some, wrote lots of songs with those guys, and they recorded a few songs of mine on their albums in the past. Um, and actually, I just, somebody just posted on Facebook a few days ago, the uh, Annapolis Valley Honor Choir here in Nova Scotia. Uh, they did a whole online thing and there had to be, I don't know how many people were, were in the choir, 50, 60, 70 people. And uh, they did a whole online concert. And the last song that they played was called Good People. And it's a song that I wrote uh, with Sean from Great Big C. And that I recorded on my, la my second last record. And Great Big C also recorded it on their last record album that they put out together as Great Big C. It's called Good People. I'm going to play it right now, actually. And then I'm going to play some Blue Rodeo. Because that's more my style, Blue Rodeo. So, I get that, I do get that a lot though, like Great Big C, uh, that type of stuff, and they, uh, people say, well, why don't you, you don't play Great Big C, but you're from Newfoundland. And I go, I know, I am from Newfoundland, but I'm what they call a townie, okay? So, I grew up in St. John's, and uh, I grew up listening to Led Zeppelin, and Bee Gees, and Billy Joel, and James Taylor, Rod Stewart, Bruce Springsteen, Led Zeppelin. Like that's, that's the music that I grew up listening to. Uh, and I never really listened to a lot of Celtic music. Uh, my grandparents did. Uh, so I heard a little bit here and there, but my, my parents are very young and they, they liked rock and roll. So I wasn't brought up around uh, Newfoundland Celtic music. Okay, here's a song I wrote called Good People. It goes like this. The world of day can be a scary place Hard to keep your faith in the human race Running out of trees and we're running out of space But we'll never run out of good people Ask for a shovel the day you will fall With the coffee I'll call you in from the cold If you get lost, I'll show me where to go If I give you a ride, good people And good people are hard to find Right around the corner at the end of line, it's true Good people got peace of mind, and I'd like to spend my time with you. Ooh, with you. A man is nothing if he ain't got a friend. Down and out, not a penny to spend. The bells of Bob will ring in the end. For good people. And good people are hard to find. Right around the corner at the end of the line, it's true. Good people got peace of mind, and I'd like to spend my time with you. Ooh, with you. We're rich or poor, we're born to be free. Fly around the world, sail the seven seas. Ain't no place that I would rather be than here right now with good people. And good people are hard to find. Right around the corner at the end of the line, it's true. Good people got peace of mind, and I'd like to spare my time with you. Ooh, with you. Hey. And good people are hard to find, right around the corner at the end of the line, it's true. Good people got peace of mind, and I'd like to spare my time with you. It's hard to keep your faith in the human race. We're running out of trees and we're running out of space. We'll never run out of good people. Good people, thank you so much. So I see, okay, uh, tragically hip, ahead by a century. Yeah, Paul, yeah. If, I, if I can jump in for one second. Sure. We totally want to hear your Blue Rodeo jam. And then we'd like to get the, the chat queued up maybe for your final song. Okay, so yeah. hit us with some Blue Rodeo and get your request in the chat um, for yeah. Paul's final song of the night. This is yeah. awesome. Blue Rodeo. I'll do Blue Rodeo and uh, I see some uh, Ahead by a Century in there too by uh, The Tragic Hip, which I play. 
So I can do that. All right. It looks like consensus for finale of the night. All right. By a century, if you've got that one. I do. Awesome. I'll give, I'll give it a whirl. Here it is. Head by century. Thanks, guys, for having me. Sing, we climb a tree, and maybe then we talk, or sit silently and listen to our thoughts. 
loses her someday, cast in a golden light, no dress rehearsal, this is our life. And that's when the heart stopped me, and I had a Revenge and doubt Tonight we smoke them out You are hit by century You are hit by century You are hit by century morning shroud and then the day began I tilted your cloud you tilted my hand rain falls in real time rain fell through the night no dress rehearsal and this is our life That's when the heart is stumbling And I had a serious dream We're revenge and down Tonight we smoke them out You are hit by century You are hit by century You are hit by century You are hit by century. You are hit by century. You are hit by century. It's disappointing you scared me down. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Thank you, so thank you so much, Paul. Anytime. Oh, and thank you to everyone for being here. Thank you to the CASC team for the amazing work that they've done to put this together. Thank you from Obi, the French Bulldog. Um, thank you to our sponsors. Thank you to the winners and huge congratulations. Everyone, stay safe, stay healthy, keep doing what you're doing, and we hope to see you all in person again next year. Have a wonderful night. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Good night.